subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Just as the opposition was finally on the right track in attacking and targeting Prime Minister Narendra Modi for his botched up handling of the pandemic, it seems to have got derailed again with personal attacks against him. Questioning the Prime Minister for this completely messy handling of the pandemic and for the very flawed vaccination program is very wise. However, targeting him for his mock tears, making fun of him for crocodile tears is equally unwise. If one thing elections in the last few years, if one thing politics in India in the last few years should have taught the opposition, it's this very crucial lesson. Never target Prime Minister Narendra Modi personally, never launch personal attacks against him because what that does is it strengthens brand Modi further and boomerangs on the opposition. At this point, it was going well for the opposition. They were on the right track. They were questioning the PM and the government for the pandemic, for the way it was being handled. However, then came this satire by this parody uh, account, uh, by this parody website. And everybody thought it was the New York Times page one, which basically had a picture of a crocodile. And it said uh, India's PM cried. Now, of course, it turned out to just be a satire and parody, but that did not stop the opposition from sharing it widely. That did not stop Modi's critics from using that widely to make fun of him. Uh, this, of course, is in context to PM Modi's, well, whether it was an act or it was real, one can't say, but to his emotional moments during an, a virtual interaction with health workers of Varanasi. Uh, the PM shed a few tears. And those tears, the opposition thought, was a great tool, was a great weapon to attack him with, to use to make fun of him. But unfortunately for the opposition, if there's one thing that recent history tells them, it's that any attacks against the PM, uh, personal attacks against the PM, will only go against it. Uh, you know, this is something that Narendra Modi has very carefully worked on, very carefully crafted. He is a PM whose image and whose projection of integrity, the perception of integrity that he's created is what has made him a much loved leader among the masses. And any questions on these, any attacks on these are completely unwise, uh, will end up only coming back to haunt you, uh, the, to haunt the opposition and to his critics. Let's begin a little uh, from when he was a Gujarat chief minister. Let's begin from 2007, when Sonia Gandhi's uh, very ill-advised and ill-timed uh, comment calling him Maud Ka Saudagar not only cost the Congress the 2007 Gujarat Assembly elections, but actually in a way changed the political tide of the country. It made Narendra Modi this perpetual victim who was always under vicious attack by his entitled opponents. Now, fast forward to 2019, and this only got cemented further. Rahul Gandhi's Chokidar Chor had jive at Narendra Modi, uh, where he was insinuating um, corruption in the Rafal deal. Everybody knows what happened to that. It was used to the hilt by the Congress in the run-up to the 2019 elections. The results are for all to see. People did not like that their beloved and you know what they consider to be honest prime minister was being attacked in a way like this by an entitled dynast. And what happened eventually is that the Congress was taught a lesson. In fact, I traveled quite a bit on the ground to cover those elections and I did find that there was zero traction for this Chokidar Chor Hai If at all anything, it was being used um, in a way that would support Modi. Uh, in fact, Prime Minister Modi also used it that way. He said, I wear abusers like jewels um, on my uh, crown. And, you know, uh, he is very, very astute that way. He knows how to turn the tide, whether it's Mani Shankar Ayers, Chai Wala Jaib or Neech Admi Jaib, all of this have only gone to strengthen brand Modi and have displayed the sheer foolishness of attacking such a popular prime minister personally. In fact, you know, this is something that Modi has also perhaps or is perhaps learning the hard way that personal attacks against popular leaders is not particularly wise. In the run-up to the Bengal Assembly elections recently, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is very jeering Didi or Didi uh, taunts at Mamata Banerjee seem to have boomeranged, seem to have not gone down well with the people of Bengal, where Mamata Banerjee is indeed a popular leader. 
the bjp has been cut to size in the state uh, and it's something that politics today is telling us that voters don't like to see the leaders they love being attacked personally at this point there are really 101 reasons that narendra modi's government has given to the opposition to corner it to question it uh, as i said the handling of the pandemic has been completely abysmal the vaccination program the vaccination policy has been flawed has been blotchy has been you know nothing that this government can boast about and these were the things that the opposition and his critics and rivals were raising very rightly so they were doing the right thing these are things that actually hurt the person the common man these are things that are actually hurting the voter and these are things that can matter in an election if you use them cleverly if you're able to sell your message to the voters and the opposition was on track doing that however of course it seems that the temptation to attack prime minister modi personally launch personal uh, attacks against him to mock him is too hard to resist so when this entire crocodile tears uh, uh, you know sort of satire erupted from congress uh, former congress president rahul gandhi to congress leader digvijay singh they all tweeted in different ways uh, uh, you know taking a jibe at prime minister modi mr digvijay singh of course later deleted his tweet but there was a lot of traction on social media making fun of the prime minister for crying of what they what they sort of hinted pretending to cry at the virtual interaction and then of course taking on from this crocodile tears satire that became viral on social media now you know understand one thing about narendra modi he thrives on the power of messaging it's far more difficult for an incumbent to be able to defend poor policies to be able to defend abysmal governance as we are seeing right now at the time of a pandemic at such a crucial unprecedented crisis hour but it is far easier for the incumbent especially if it's a popular incumbent to field personal attacks now the opposition should have and should stick to the to the to the track of questioning this government's policy to questioning this government's failures to questioning this government's uh, governance gap instead of attacking him personally because remember this is the pm whose messaging is so strong that despite complete blunders like demonetization uh he's been able to tide through he's been able to tell people that demonetization was not a bad thing was in their favor this is the same pm who's really hollow antics like thali bajao and uh diya jalao are something that people follow blindly and you're handing over the advantage to this pm on a platter by attacking him personally it's easy for narendra modi if you do that because it helps him divert attention from the real issues from issues where his government is in deep failing to becoming this victim who's under attack by this privileged opposition the self-made grounded leader being attacked for crying for feeling for the people by this entitled opposition and that's the kind of messaging that narendra modi is going to turn this into his favor the opposition as i said would do well to go back to questioning narendra modi on his policies on his misgovernance and leave these personal attacks aside do log on to our website the print.in to read my column politics the link to which is given in the description below